Hi everyone, join me for a quick exploration of Prometheus Ponta. I will start with a short review of the four technologies supported by the instrument, and then I will walk you through how to operate the Prometheus Ponta and the first steps to start an experiment with the Ponta control software. So, your protein characterization work requires high precision, high quality data to support your decisions. And to address this requirement, Prometheus Panta offers four technologies in one instrument that delivers the highest quality thermal and colloidal stability data to give you deep insight into your protein's behavior. Let's review the four technologies together in details. Nanodifferential scanning fluorimetry, or NanoDSF, is used to measure the thermal stability of your protein using its intrinsic fluorescence at 330 and 350 nanometers. Dynamic light scattering, or DLS, is used to measure the size of particles in solution, and it informs you on sample purity and the presence of contaminants. If you measure with DLS across a thermal ramp, it will indicate the temperature at which the size of your particles begin to change. You can also use it to calculate the self-association parameter Kd. Back reflection indicates the turbidity of your sample. If you measure with back reflection across a thermal ramp, you will also be able to follow the formation of large amorphous aggregates. Finally, static light scattering, or SLS, is used to monitor this time smaller aggregates, and you can use it to also calculate your protein's molecular weight. On top of that, you can also calculate an additional self-association parameter, the second virial coefficient, B22. So all together, these four technologies combined in one experiment really give you the full picture on your protein's behavior. Now, let's have a look together on how to start an experiment with Prometheus Panta. Starting an experiment on Prometheus Panta is really straightforward. There is also very little sample preparation needed. Have your samples ready in Eppendorf tubes, or if you're working with well plates, 394 and 96 well plate work as well. You can simply open the door using the touch screen on the instrument front panel. It will automatically open the door for you to access the capillary tray. You can also use the Panta control software to open and close the door for you. Once you have your samples ready, you're good to go. Using only 10 microliters of sample, Prometheus Panta allows for flexible throughput and measures a very broad concentration range, starting from 10 micrograms per milliliter up to more than 200 milligrams per milliliter. Let's have a look at how to load your samples. There are two options depending on your experimental needs. The single capillary mode allows you to load up to 48 individual capillaries. Simply load your sample by dipping your capillary in your tube, then you can place it on the capillary tray. You can load as many samples as you'd like and then secure them with the magnetic lid. This magnetic lid will ensure that the capillaries stay in close contact with the heating element and ensures proper heat transfer throughout the whole experiment. This will provide the most accurate measurements possible. For higher throughput or if you already prepared your samples in well plates, the capillary chip is designed for faster loading. There are 24 capillaries on the chip and they are spaced to match specifically a row on a 384 well plate or you can load duplicates on 96 well plates. To start, remove the single capillary adapter, then you can put your plate on the capillary loading station and you can draw the sample in. Place the chip on the capillary tray and secure it with the lid. Then you can close the door and you're ready to start. The rest of the experimental setup will be done directly on the Panta control software. Follow me as I will show you how to start and run your experiments on the software. Start by clicking on the new project button. Then name your experiment and select the tray type, single or chip, depending on the format you want for loading your samples. You have the option to annotate the samples now or go directly to Discovery Scan and come back later to finish annotation. The software will perform a Discovery Scan of your samples to determine the best excitation power for the experiment and identify empty capillary slots. Each capillary is visible as a combination of two peaks. 
They represent the fluorescence intensity at 330 and 350 nanometers respectively. In addition, the scattering signal from light scattering optics and the turbidity signal from the back reflection optics are displayed in a separate graph at the bottom for each capillary. Now you're ready to add different types of stability measurements. Click on Add Measurement. You will see a list of all possible measurement options with their description. For this demonstration, we will focus on size analysis and thermal denaturation. First, let's start a size analysis experiment. This experiment takes a DLS measurement at a single temperature to determine particle size and assess sample homogeneity. On the left panel, select between high sensitivity mode and quick mode. For a quick snapshot of samples, the quick mode is a good starting point. For precise sizing results or low concentration samples, select high sensitivity mode. Then you can simply press start. The data will populate in real time during your experiment. So you can always pop in and check how things are going. Once it's complete, you will see a visual readout of the results in the form of a violin plot displaying the size distribution. Additional parameters such as the hydrodynamic radius, the polydispersity index, and the size distribution are displayed in a table for review. Finally, you can also review the autocorrelation function to assess data quality. Next, I'd like to show you how to perform a thermal denaturation experiment. Thermal unfolding measurements collect data from nano-DSF, back reflection, DLS and SLS in parallel, along the entire thermal denaturation gradient. You'll see that I am using the same samples that I run for the size analysis, and it has added another measurement tab to the experiment. As before, input your settings. The thermal ramp is customizable, with options to run from 15 degrees up to 110 degrees, and at a rate of 0.1 up to 7 degrees per minute. Once you're set up, click Start Measurement. And then you can simply walk away. There is no need for you to stay at the instrument unless you want to watch the results populate in real time, of course. Upon finishing, it is easy to review your data in the tab. Select individual capillaries to see how the unfolding curves look or compare a few different samples with each other. This data here is an antibody in different buffers. Prometheus Fanta provides high-resolution data and shows you even subtle differences between formulations. It makes it really easy to spot how each buffer impacts stability. With some additional experimental setup, Prometheus Fanta also allows you to measure self-association parameters, molecular weight, or do chemical denaturation experiments. And it is possible to gain even more insight into more stability characteristics of your proteins of interest. Overall, the Panta control software allows you to quickly and easily adjust your experimental settings or annotate your samples both during and after the run is completed. Once you're done collecting all the data you'd like, you can move into the Panta analysis software. This software offers further options to annotate, analyze, and export your data. You can use it to merge replicates and easily spot variation. It also enables you to combine multiple experimental files so you can compare data over time. With four technologies collecting high-resolution data from a single sample, Prometheus Panta gives you a deep understanding of your protein's behavior. It makes it the ideal tool to select the optimal candidates or conditions for your applications in antibody engineering, formulation screening, biologics or biosimilar candidate selection, thermal shift assays for its screening, or protein stability optimization for structural biology.